In recent weeks, there's been a non-stop barrage of news stories about the government's attempt to stem the financial crisis by the tried and tested method of screwing the working class, whilst leaving excessively rich to do what they like and get richer by the day, and preventing civil unrest via the age-old technique of divide and conquer, by using the unemployed as a scapegoat, suggesting that the crisis is somehow their fault, or at least being made worse by them. Some of the more observant members of the public may have noticed that the problem started with the greedy bankers and their stupid risk-taking and ridiculous payoffs, not the working class or the unemployed, who the austerity measures will affect the most, with cuts to schools and hospitals and more draconian measures to get people off the dole. Meanwhile, the bankers and the CAOs of multinationals are still taking on massive payoffs the size of a small country's GDP. Another group who haven't been affected by the cuts is the company that's been given the job of building our new nuclear submarines. So the government cuts budgets of daycare centres and nurseries and spends the money on nuclear weapons that they'll never use, hopefully. All these measures will help the poorest in our society become even poorer and have less money to spend. And because capitalism works by people spending money to keep the money flowing round, these measures can only slow down the recovery. We should hardly be surprised at the government's use of a scapegoat to detract from its inability to regulate the banks properly. Every administration I can remember has done the same. The thing that surprises me is people's willingness to accept it. In Greece, the austerity measures cause weeks of rising. Now, I'm not suggesting you should go out and smash Marks and Spencer's windows, not unless you really want to. All I'm saying is, don't buy into the bullshit. Unemployed people are not hurting the economy, the government is. One thing I've heard recently is that unemployed people don't want to go back to work because it's not worth bothering with, as long as the benefits are so high. Well, I can say from past experience, this isn't true. Most people on benefits are already on the breadline. Maybe the government, instead of cutting people's benefits, should consider raising the minimum wage, thus making it worth getting a job and in turn helping the economy. Giving this crippled capitalistic system another crutch so it can hobble its gammy corpse a little further into the 21st century.